Hi, I'm Sarah Boyce. And I'm Dennis Stoner. And we're here with Grey Lady Wines, and today we're talking about Palmaz wines. And I was lucky enough to sit down with Alan Greenberg, who works with the Palmaz family, right. when when he came to um, Nantucket in May. Right. But why don't you tell me why you invited him to Well, Nantucket? I will tell you, Sarah, because I met Alan maybe six years ago when we were doing a festival out at uh, Tanglewood mm -hmm. for the Boston Symphony. And in the run-up to the festival, we went out to a restaurant and uh, someone at a table was having a bottle of Palmaz wine. I wasn't Ooh, familiar with the nice. wine, but they knew that we were doing the wine festival. And in that wonderful moment that happens when people mm -hmm. that love wine get together, even side by side in a restaurant, strangers, well, <laughs> he offered us a glass of this wine. And of course, when we tasted the wine, we thought, Jesus, this is really remarkable wine. Mm -hmm. So immediately after that uh, dinner, the next day, I tracked down Alan uh, Greenberg and said, well, you know, uh, you have to come to Nantucket because your wine deserves to be on Nantucket, deserves mm -hmm. to be in your house, actually. Uh, this wine is exceptional, almost Bordeaux-like in its complexity, uh, very concentrated, rich, but again, um, quite a bit of finesse, and uh, uh, it's a family <coughs> that uh, started out rather recently, <coughs> excuse me, in the wine game in Napa, but uh, the family made quite a bit of money uh, in cardiac stents. I guess there's money in that. I know that I've supported them. And uh, so they instantly uh, applied all that intellectual firepower mm -hmm. to the process of making wine and came up with uh, really great, great wine. If you haven't had Palmas, again, you should try it. Uh, they also make a uh, Chardonnay that's named after uh, the owner's wife. It's called oh, Amalia. Yeah. Yeah. And again, uh, uh, their approach has been very successful. Mm -hmm. So um, you really want to listen to what Alan has to say, but you really want to also put a bottle or two of these wines in your cellar and share them with your friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Cabernet is really exceptional. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, suggest Bordeaux as much as Napa, and that doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. So uh, take it from Sarah and I, this is something that you should uh, uh, take a shot at. Great. Well. Wow. Cheers to Palmaz and, Palmaz and the wines they are continually yeah. creating. Hope you like them. Cheers. I'm Sarah Boyce with Grey Lady Wines, and I am here with Alan Greenberg of Palmaz Vineyards. Welcome. Thank you. Um, tell me about Palmaz Vineyards. Okay. So Palmaz Vineyards is a uh, smaller winery based in the southern end of the Napa Valley. It's owned today by the Palmaz family. Uh, Dr. Julio Palmas, his family, uh, two adult kids, sort of a boutique winery, if you will. So we're small, we make maybe five to 7,000 cases of wine. So for this family, it's all about, <coughs> excuse me, making great wine. It's not making quantity, it's all about quality. So we make a few different wines. Uh, Cedar Knoll was the original winery, uh, going back to 1881. A gentleman named Henry Hagen owned the estate and he went under during Prohibition and his winery site goes for the next 85 years until the Palmaz family resurrected the winery. The Palmaz family, originally hailing from Argentina, uh, came to the Napa Valley in 1977. So you might remember it's the year after the judgment of Paris. Really good time to be in the Napa Valley, right? It's an exciting time to be there. And they fell in love with wine. It was uh, Julio and Amalia Palmaz. Uh, he was actually at UC Davis, which you might know as the winemaking school. But he wasn't there to make wine, he was there for medicine. And when Dr. Palmas, as we call him today, came out of medical school, he created a medical device we know today as the heart stent. So if you're familiar with that little device, hopefully not personally, but I'm sure you know some people, Dr. Julio Palmas of Palmas Vineyards was the inventor of the heart stent. So the family spent about 20 years away from the Napa Valley, uh, working with the stent, and had the patent for that. And they came back as a family 20 years later, and they found this old abandoned property and set off to start making wine. So. When they started to make wine, they didn't quite do it the same way that everybody else. It's a 100% gravity flow winery, meaning we don't pump our wines at all post-fermentation. Uh, for you, for anybody who might be uh, interested in the wines, by not pumping the wines, we don't break apart the tannins. So the wines are very approachable and softer from the first pop of the cork. The good news is they're drinkable young, but they can also age for a long period of time. But the fun part about the winery is that Dr. Palmas and the family took a mountain that we sit on, 600 acres, so a nice piece of property, a little less than 60 acres are actually planted, 
built the winery deep inside the mountain. So we hollowed out the mountain, about a 110,000 square foot hole in the mountain. It's about Home Depot size building, just to give you some scale. So inside the mountain, built four vertical caves, 15 stories tall, where we make wine start to finish. So the fruit starts at the highest point of our estate and will very gently work its way down our slope. That's why the wines are so beautiful and so approachable. People go crazy for the wines. Where can I get it? I want it. I live in such and such a state. Where can I get the wine? Help me. I'm, I want to visit the winery. They're fans. Malia is the Chardonnay that we make on the property. Uh, Malia is uh, Julio's wife or uh, Mrs. Palmaz, depending on who, you, who you're talking to. Um, she was the inspiration for this wine and that's why it's named after her. Uh, we're mainly a red wine producer. Uh, Cabernet is what we do. Uh, but Julio was away on a trip and Amalia was presented with an opportunity to buy some Chardonnay. So she sourced a little Chardonnay, some out of Carneros, some out of Napa Valley, and she started to make Chardonnay. Now, she hid this from Julio for about eight months. So she took the fruit, she pressed it and put it into French oak barrels, put it inside the winery, even stained the barrels red so they looked like they were part of the red wine program. Until this little green bottle came bouncing down the bottling line, Julio had no idea. The story that I understand is that he blew his top and after a couple weeks he tried the wine and he said, you know, this is really good Chardonnay. Now we make a Chardonnay. So it's more in the Burgundian style than it is in the typical California or semi-typical California style of big and butter and oak and high alcohol. It's more finesse and balance and elegant. It's a really gorgeous Chardonnay. So if you like a white Burgundy, this is more of that style. Uh, it's clean and it's beautiful and it's very small production. We make 700 cases per year Okay, so we do two different cabs on the property. So when we're in making wine we choose fruit in the vineyards uh, After 15 months of sitting in a barrel to represent our two different wines So we have no predetermination in the vineyard or inside the winery if the fruit from any of the different vineyard blocks or parcels that we have Will be of Palmaz character or cedar knoll because every year it's different mother nature just plays tricks on you same vintage year, same winemaker, same production techniques. It's all about character. So we can make two very different style wines on the estate. And if side by side, you probably wouldn't even know they came from the same place because they have very different profiles. So after 15 months in a barrel, uh, mother and daughter, Somalia and Florencia, and our winemaker lady named Mia Klein, her assistant Tina, will sit down and they taste every parcel blind, not knowing what it is. And they make determinations. So the deeper, darker, richer fruit goes to our Palmas. So we make that wine first and then we let that sit in barrel a little bit longer and then we bottle that. Mm. Palmas is definitely fuller bodied, uh, certainly it would enjoy a glass or two right now as well, but uh, with food it certainly would be a wonderful wine. I think our, uh, our location in the Napa Valley helps us dramatically. Uh, we're in this newest area in the Napa Valley called Coombsville. I don't know if you're familiar, it's, it's one of the sub Appalachians. So it's the newest one that came about in mid-December. It's a very unique growing area. Uh, there's maybe 20 or so wineries in this area. It's all mountain fruit. It's all long, long hang time. So we typically bring our fruit in uh, around a month later than they do in Calistoga. Somewhere before Halloween, we're done, typically. Uh, so the longer you hang on buying, the better the balance of the sugars and the acids. Uh, so you have that, it's all volcanic soil. It's also very low yields. So we get dense, concentrated fruit. So we don't make a lot of wine, as I mentioned, but we make fruit that's just so deep and dark and concentrated. So those are things that come into play. The Gravity Flow Winery is incredible. You should check it out if you can. It's, and of course our winemaker, um, Mia has an amazing touch. She's made some amazing uh, wines coming out of the Napa Valley. Um, so she just takes what we give her and she makes it even better. This just blends it all together and make it a perfect wine.